Confirmed cases of coronavirus closing in on 25,000 with reports of a confirmed case, the 12th in the United States in Wisconsin. Joining us with an update, Dr. Isaac Bogosh, infectious disease specialist based out of the Toronto General Hospital and the University of Toronto. So, doctor, we spoke with you just about a week ago and you were yeah. relatively, I don't know, optimistic about the virus and how uh, the World <laughs> Health Organization, the U.S. and China were handling this. How do you feel today, given what we're seeing in terms of the number of cases right now? You know, I'm still optimistic, but I think I'm also realistic. I mean, there's still massive control efforts in place in China uh, to which the world has never seen. I mean, the scale and the breadth of the control efforts in place are just staggering. Having said that, we're still seeing cases exported from China. And there's some arrows, not huge arrows, but real arrows pointing in the direction that, you know, there might be ongoing chains of transmission outside of China. So, for example, uh, there's uh, Thailand, Japan and Singapore that are uh, that seem to be, uh, you know, small hotspots where people are getting infected with this virus without having traveled to China. Is this reflective of the pendulum swinging uh, in a direction that we don't want it to swing in? Maybe. Having said that, the, the public health infrastructure of the United States is tremendous. And, uh, and so far, you, you're doing OK over there, as, as are we in Canada. And Dr. Bogosh, you know, obviously a lot has been learned about the disease um, in a short amount of time here. And just within the last week, are there things we now know about coronavirus we did not know, um, just in terms of uh, the virus itself and, and how it uh, impacts patients and how it is transmitted um, from person to person? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a, it's amazing at the, the rapidity at which we're learning about this. And, you know, there really is a good global community that's coordinated and communicating, at least from the medical and the scientific front. There's an emerging narrative that this virus may not be as severe as it was once thought. So in the early data that came out, we saw some numbers that showed a lot of people in the intensive care unit and, and sadly, uh, some people succumbing to this illness. Of course, we, we certainly know this can cause severe illness. There's been about 400 deaths to date, uh, but there is an emerging narrative of uh, less severe infection in many, many, many individuals, many individuals not requiring hospitalization, many individuals having a rapid recovery. So, you know, obviously we have to be careful. We have to be um, open-minded as to what this can do. But I, it looks like the proportion of people that are, are going to have a severe infection is getting smaller and smaller as we learn more about this disease. So that's really helpful. Hey, Isaac, I was down at NIH yesterday talking to Francis Collins there, and he was talking to me about the work that he's doing, obviously, with Tony Fauci um, with regard to the vaccine. And it sounds like we're several months off, but he was pretty optimistic, number one. And number two, he was talking about an even more powerful vaccine for, for all flu viruses, which really kind of surprised me is on the horizon as well. What's your take on both of those developments? So point one is the coronavirus vaccine. I really am happy to know that there has been some work that has gone into this, of course, before this epidemic, mainly driven by the SARS outbreak and, of course, MERS, which, which was more recently. But I think regardless of the, of the uh, work that's been done, we still have to be a little skeptical that a vaccine will be deployed in time for this uh, epidemic. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of data and a lot of money and a lot of, you know, unfortunately, time to get a vaccine that's ready, that is actually useful. We remember Ebola virus in 2014 and how rapidly a vaccine was implemented in the field. But people forget that there was over a decade's worth of work that went into the vaccine. And it was basically uh, undergoing human trials at that point and had successfully undergone human trials. So it was ready for the field. The coronavirus the, uh, vaccine does not seem to be uh, as ready as that one, although I'd be obviously ecstatic if it was available uh, in a short period of time. Related to your second point, yes, what you're referring to is what's called the universal influenza vaccine. We know that influenza mutates and changes year by year, and we're always trying to play catch up with this virus. Of course, we know influenza kills about a half a million people every year on Earth. It is a terrible infection. 
And uh, what they're trying to do is look for conserved parts of the virus that don't change and, and use those to mount um, a vaccine to target those areas so that you can get, a, get one shot and be protected against all different strains of influenza. So that would be tremendous. And of course, that's the holy grail of influenza vaccinations. So in terms of coronavirus, when do we think, what do researchers say will have sort of the peak for infections in terms of the timeline? Oh, that's also the million dollar question too. So it's not entirely clear. And I really think that we're gonna have a lot of uh, clarity as to which direction this is gonna go in the next week or two weeks. And in the next week to two weeks, we're gonna have a much better understanding of if China's massive control initiatives have done enough to slow the transmission of this virus down to allow for the public health teams and the medical teams to do catch up work, identify cases, get people into care, do contact tracing and really and really get this this issue under control. Of course, you know, if we still see more and more cases exported from China to other parts of the world, if we see chains of transmission emerging elsewhere in China outside of uh, Hubei province and, and of course, more worrying some outside of China, for example, in Thailand, Japan, um, and Singapore, as we're starting to see now, that's a bit concerning. And that those are arrows pointing in the direction that this is not going to get uh, controlled by these massive, massive uh, public health initiatives, and that we're going to start to see um, ongoing chains of transmission outside of China and more global spread of this infection. So I really think the next week to two weeks are key to determining if this, uh, if this will be successfully contained or not. Dr. Isaac Bogosh, infectious disease specialist based out of uh, Toronto General Hospital and the University of Toronto. Thanks so much. Anytime. Have a good one. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.